in, in, in essence, the construct is asking the question. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, that. the small self that's concerned about job or family issues or abortion or capital punishment or um, or even I'm a screwed up person. Um, you know, I'm, I'm this little person and I'm all screwed up and I'm I'm not I don't have it together like so and so. Comparison. Um, if once again you have to have a subject object mm -hmm. split for that and you have to to get into uh, com even to compare thought forms you have to there is an ordering involved and with that comparison with that ordering then the construct then asks the questions and and those aren't real questions in the ultimate sense those are statements it's like statements of the construct yes when I say, what about my, I have a problem with my boss or I have a problem with my daughter or so forth, it's really, or even the, the construct asking the question, what's wrong with my relationship with so-and-so or what's wrong with my life, really it's just the construct asking the question or another way of looking at it is the construct making a statement that it is a construct. Mm -hmm. because the construct isn't seen as a construct. So this brings us around full circle to defining the problem. That um, even if the problem has been solved, how can, how can one know that it has been solved if one hasn't been able to see what the problem is. Whenever and we're once oh, it ahead. seems like really once once that you can really see what the problem is. What seemed to be the problem doesn't seem like a problem. There is no problem. There yeah, there isn't any. That's a fact. That there is no problem. Because the only problem, well, because every perceived problem really is a belief in separation, and there is no separation. Is that what you're saying? Right. And so there is no problem. There's only seeming problem. Once the, the construct is seen as a construct, you know, the, the split is healed because there is no subject-object split anymore. The problem has been seen as a problem in the mind. There was a the split was in the mind, and, and once it's been given up, once it's been seen as that's not the fact of it, that's not the what what is reality. Then there is a, there is no problem. So the key idea that we opened up with about you first have to see the problem is being in the mind. And once it is recognized to be a problem, the, the split is in the mind, not out in the world, then there is no problem. So why doesn't it seem that easy <laughs> to do? I guess because the mind just doesn't want to see that it's not out in the world. The mind doesn't want to see that it's just right there in the mind. Well, let's bring it back to our conversation here and, and pull it away from the abstract. I mean, there. if it doesn't seem easy, there has to be an investment in that construct, in those thought form associations. Why is there such a strong investment in it? Because there's fear. There's fear that if I, if I give up ordering my thoughts, if I give up this construct of who I think I am as a person, all my meanings and associations and conclusions I've reached about the world, that there will be loss involved, that it would be scary, that somehow that this construct is serving me, mm -hmm. that it has value to me. And, you know, it's like, why would I want to step back in the mind to see the bigger picture? Why would I want to question the construct if, if I still believe that it, it serves me. You wouldn't. wouldn't. Then there'd be no, there'd be no motivation. Mm -hmm. 
then there's no point in fixing what isn't broken. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one can say, well, that seems that seems awful deep. It seems awful abstract. Let's bring it back to the the feeling level. You know. You know, do you feel complete? stable peace in your life? Is it is it a roller coaster ride? Is it do you have emotions, fluctuating emotions, seeming times of peace and joy and seeming times of of whatever, upset, aggravation, irritation, guilt, fear, jealousies, so on and so forth. Mild or major, you know, irritation, rage regardless of the degree, regardless of the direction, you know, can one start to, to look at one's life and, and honestly look at the emotions and say, gee, I don't feel a constant, consistent, stable state of peace, that there is something here that needs to be looked at. You know, a lot of times people have said, well, you just try to minimize your demons or your vices and everything. Uh, manage your neurosis. Just come to a sense of general unhappiness <laughs> and try to manage the major crises, you Instead know. Instead of particular miserableness. Yes. Can we come to a point where, where can one can start to see, realistically see, the hope of, of completely bringing to an end all sense of upset? all sense of disorder, all sense of chaos. A phenomenal kind of proposition. You know. To do that requires the questioning of the constructs. It requires that the mind let go of those thought form associations. And you can't let go of them unless you see that they're there, obviously. Right. And you so can't see that they're there if you believe that they, that you are they, that you are, you are a construct. You know. So the dialogue helps to uncover, disclose, expose the constructs. Mm -hmm. It helps the mind see. Oh, I thought that was me. Mm -hmm. Thought that was me, but that, but I'm not that. Helps to step back and to disidentify from that which it thought it was. And there's just immense joy with that. I mean, it's it's a it's like weights of, of strain, stress lifted off the mind by holding on to the construct and the thought form associations. It was denying its natural abstract state, its state of freedom. Mm -hmm. And conversely, by being able to step back and disidentify from the false con construct, the, the mind is, is released to its natural state and feels a stable sense of peace and joy. It takes a lot of energy to hold in place an idea of myself that's not myself. Yes. And I can see how freeing it is to to just let go of all that garbage mm -hmm. that I've packed on. In the early stages, it, it is frightening because it seems to be a uh, letting go of the ways of the world. The world teaches, you know, bigger, better, faster, more. Upward mobility, for instance, is a, a common held belief. Um, competition, staying ahead of the competition. So you were saying that, what, that it's, it feels kind of scary to think about stepping out of, of all the ways of the world that have become so familiar. Mm -hmm. Because the, once again, it gets back to the security. 
the constructs the mind has placed its identity in those constructs. And it seems ludicrous to step out of ambition. It seems ludicrous. You know, it seems as if you know, the construct says you will die. <laughs> you know, that the sense in the world of scarcity from within the belief system is the, the self-concept that to give up the striving and the fighting and everything, you will, you will be swallowed up by this so-called external world mm -hmm. that itself is a construct, you know. Yeah, because the teaching has been that, you know, it's only by setting goals and working hard and going for it that you can get anything, you know, that you can get your fair share, that you can stay ahead of the game, that you can keep your chin above water. Mm -hmm. And and what you're saying is that when you let go of that construct or that self-concept, that you're also letting go of all those kinds of goals. Mm -hmm. You're actually replacing those kinds of goals with, with the one goal mm -hmm. of being at peace. A unified goal of peace. So we're not speaking of this process of laying aside the concept as a, a goal-less um, process in the sense of it has a goal, but that goal is an abstract goal, peace of mind. It is not, there is no form, thought form associated with that goal. The goal can seem to be a very, uh, that can be, seem to be very ambiguous and abstract when and the mind is conditioned to pursuing, achieving concrete goals, certain outcomes that are desirable in the world's eyes. But that's in effect the, what it is, it's the laying aside of the worldly goals for the one goal of peace. 